Today, we're going to be answering some of the most commonly asked questions from Canadian YouTubers. Do Canadian YouTubers have to pay taxes on their earnings? Short answer is yes. Earning income through YouTube is no different than any other business, whether it be an accounting firm, um, you know, a gas station, a grocery store, it doesn't matter. You're in the business to make a profit. You have to report the income and pay tax on it, on the profits, right? So you might be generating revenues, but you only pay tax on your profits, which in your, just to clarify, your profits is your revenues minus your expenses is what your profit is, and that's what is taxed on your return. Okay, so that means it's very important that you treat this as a business and keep track of any expenses that you have related to earning that income. How much do Canadian YouTubers need to earn before having to pay taxes on the income? So similar to any other business, you start paying tax on the very first dollar of income that you earn, right? Doesn't matter if you made $100 or $100,000. If you're running a business to earn a profit, you have to report the income and pay tax on it. Now, I did mention running a business to earn a profit because there is such a thing as having a reasonable expectation of profit. And so if you're doing something to earn revenues, then you're running a business. And as long as there's a reasonable expectation of profit, you're not just incurring, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 of loss every year and never really expect to make money, then you're running a business and you should be reporting that on your tax return. What can Canadian YouTubers deduct on their tax return? Well, uh, you'll see a theme. It's any expenses incurred to generate revenues for yourself, right? So as any other business that might be advertising, it could be supplies, it could be um, you know, equipment that you use, um, professional fees, paying the account, pay your tax return, that's deductible, um, telephone and internet, uh, business use of personal vehicles. So if you're driving your vehicle around, for your business, then you're able to deduct part of your business, or sorry, your vehicle expenses. And then the same thing with the business use of home expenses. So if you use your home to shoot content, to edit content, um, as an office to do your paperwork or your books, uh, you can claim part of your housing expenses against the business. There's a whole variety of different uh, things you can claim. And we do have other videos that you can check to see what is deductible and what is not. How do Canadian YouTubers report their earnings and pay taxes? Well, assuming you are not, your business is not incorporated and you're running a sole proprietorship or partnership, the revenues and expenses get reported on your personal tax return each year. So you have to report January to December on a, what's called a T2125, which is a statement of business activities. So on there, that's a schedule attached to your return. You report your revenues, all your expenses, that will report your net income for the year, your profit, and that then gets put onto your tax return and you calculate your taxes based on that. And again, that will be due um, for in Canada on April 30th of the following year. If you are running a business and you're looking to file your taxes, we always recommend that all business owners talk to professional accountants for help with filing your taxes. There's too many things that can go wrong or things you might not know if you don't talk to somebody who does this for a living, um, or there's different tips and tricks that they can provide to you to help maximize your refund. For example, this past year when the government came out with the accelerated um, depreciation for small businesses, it was a great time for businesses to purchase equipment that they might be looking at doing so because of the accelerated, the immediate expensing they can get on the depreciation. So there's always things like that that you know you won't know unless you talk to a professional. What is the tax rate for Canadian YouTubers? So because the income for YouTubers is business income that gets added onto your personal return, again, this is for unincorporated businesses, you get taxed at whatever your marginal average tax rate is for that year, right? And so that in Canada can be anywhere from 20% to over 50%, depending on what bracket you're in and what province or territory you're in. Um, so you have to be aware of that. And also something to note for anybody who is self-employed is not only do you have to pay income taxes, you also have to pay 
CPP on your income. And that all gets calculated together on your tax return. And that's all due April 30th. So for the CPP, that's an extra almost 12% tax you're paying on your income. As soon as you make over $3,500 and goes all the way up to whatever that year's maximal earnings are, which this year is at 66,600, I believe. Um, so keep that in mind because you're not only paying the income taxes, you're also paying another 12% CPP. How can Canadian YouTubers avoid or reduce the 30% withholding taxes for non-US residents? So this might have came up recently for you. Um, you will notice that US companies, YouTube, will default to a 30% withholding tax on the amounts paid to you. And in order to avoid that withholding tax being applied on your income, you need to fill out w 8 ben or w ben e on the YouTube um, page and claim a treaty benefit to get those withholding taxes reduced or even eliminated. And you can't always eliminate it, it depends on what kind of income you receive. So for example, if you are receiving you know, services, or if you're providing services such as AdSense uh, or copyright royalties like um, Play and YouTube partner programs, those income can be reduced to 0% withholding tax. But if you, your income is through what's considered motion picture or TV royalties, such as YouTube movies or shows and play partner, those will have a withholding rate of 10% based on the Canada-US tax treaty. So that cannot be eliminated. However, if that 10% withholding tax does apply to you, that can be claimed as a foreign tax credit on your Canadian return to help reduce your Canadian taxes so you're getting a credit for it and not paying tax twice on that same income. So what are the consequences of not reporting and paying taxes on your YouTube income in Canada? Well, because YouTube income is considered you know, business income, it's the same as any other, you know, not reporting any other type of revenues, and which can be a serious offense. So purposely not reporting income is or can be considered tax evasion in Canada and lead to some serious consequences. So at best, you're having that income um, assessed on your return by CRA and you have to pay back that taxes anyway, plus penalties and interest. And at worst, it's considered tax evasion and you have to pay the taxes plus interest plus civil penalties imposed by the CRA. There can be a, a, um, fines of up to 200% of the taxes evaded and a jail term of up to five years, depending on the severity of the situation. Now, those are extreme situations, um, but it is something that you want to make sure you're getting done properly. So again, talk to your professional account, make sure everything's being reported properly on your return. So if you're asking yourself if CRA has any way to know whether you're earning any income through YouTube, well, you know, there's the parameters from YouTube that if you have at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of viewed content that you will be earning something. It could be, it, doesn't need to be a lot, but you would be getting something. So CRA is an easy way to check to see that, you know, based on the parameters of this channel, this person should be reporting something. Let's confirm that with the return and see if everything matches up or if there's any discrepancy on that. So it's not something you want to play around with. It is something that CRA is taking more and more um, steps to looking into in terms of social media and um, social media businesses. So you want to make sure you're getting on site with all your filing requirements. So I hope this video is useful for you guys. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below and we will do our best to answer everyone who has questions for us. Thanks.